Can we do an interview? Yeah. All right. All right, Zach Redding, what year are we going into next year? Uh, I'm going into my fourth year, but with COVID and everything, it's kind of funny. I still got three years left. Yeah, it's still kind of confusing to, to remember who all has that extra year left and yeah, whatnot. Uh -huh. Uh, was there any, it, what, so you still have one more year left and then you have another COVID year after that? Is it... uh, so I was COVID my first year, I competed and then the next year I, uh, I got hurt so I was medical redshirt and then I competed last year. So last year was technically my freshman year and wow. now I got three more years of eligibility. Holy smokes, yeah that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does, how's your time been at Iowa State so far? My time here has been awesome, no complaints whatsoever, I love all my teammates. All my coaches, they give us so much support. The fans of Iowa State, everyone's just a real like community around here. Ray Neary and and, uh, and Sam Schuyler both have matches on our next uh, Stalemate Street League yeah. card. I don't know if you know what it is, but how do you do. think that uh, how do you think they're going to pan out? I think both of those guys are are dogs, and they're they're going to compete hard, and they're they're going to go out there and get a get a dub. I uh, appreciate that, man. Mm -hmm. What's up? All right, what's How up, Casey? You remember our interview from last year or no? Yeah, a little bit, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. You yeah. were just uh, fresh on campus. Now you've been here for a year, a full year. How's it been? Man, it's, it's been uh, it's been awesome. I, uh, you know, I went through a, a season, and uh, it was tough. But now I'm really starting to find myself uh, with these guys, not only like on the map, but like these guys. Like I really love it here. I love these guys. And uh, kind of last year I was like a new guy on campus, but now like we're a family and got that confidence again. I'm, man, I'm feeling good again. So. How's the uh, how's the outdoor game here in Ames? Oh, it's pretty good. Uh, so last year I ended up shooting a good amount of ducks. I uh, went deer hunting with my bow, shot some geese, had my dog out here, my duck dog out here. So it's the pheasants. Me, St. John went out this year with my dad. So man, it's awesome out here. It's freaking it's freaking God's country. I love it here. So you know anybody that can train a dog around here? Uh, my dad, Dale Swiderski. He's eight hours back that way, but. Uh, um, there's a couple guys around here that that n n know there's things. So for the people that don't know, tell people what your dad that, that what he does. So we have a dog kennel for um, it's it's called a Hunter Rose kennel. So it's for pointing labs or labs at point, I guess if you want to get into it. But um, trained for I mean basic obedience till we breed them as well, uh, retriever training and uh, uh, upland work. So basically, we take your dog and he can go hunt pheasants and uh, retrieve ducks for you if you're out there in the in the swamp. Let's talk about that Iowa match against Real Woods at the beginning of the year. That was electric. I know you didn't get the W like you wanted to, obviously, but uh, as far from the from the fans' point of view, that was a that was a really sick match to watch. Uh, looking back on that, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I mean, that was like I don't know. I'd like to say like the peak of my season. I think uh, I felt really good. Like I was I was feeling really good. I was healthy, and I wanted it really bad. Like it was all hyped up, and I just I just thought about it every freaking day, and I wanted it super bad, and I came up short. Um, I kind of locked up out there. I'd say like I should have should have went a little bit more towards the end or in, in, in the beginning, and uh, I found myself in the match. But you know, it was it was it was electric as, as can be. You know, I got uh, frustrated at the end, and I know I shoved him and I said things to him because I, I wanted it that bad. No, nothing against that guy, but you know, I wanted it really bad, and uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. It was fun. What did you think of the fifteen thousand or so people in the stands? Did you feel the energy, or was that something yeah, I, you didn't think about? Or no, you know, I, th I thought it like I thought it was sweet. Like screw it, let's do it, you guys. I got fifteen thousand rednecks in Iowa trying to yell at me. Like okay, I do that. I do that wherever I go. So I thought it was awesome, and uh, people at my back is it's okay. I'll take that all day long. So it was fun. All right, my one of my favorite matches of yours last year was uh, against the Cornell kid at the end of the year. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there in the crowd. No one's really watching your match. It's clear on the other side, at least from where I was sitting. And all of a sudden, I stand up and start going crazy. And everyone starts looking, and I don't think people realized, you know, you were down quite a bit in that match. But I'm sitting there thinking, like, this is it for Casey this year, and kind of reflecting on your season. And then that just turned on its head. So maybe walk people through your mindset when you were. I believe you were on bottom. And then he goes to. Uh, I was getting torched. Yeah. 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 yeah so so you know, I actually it. really hate that match because <laughs> I'm like watching the season flash before my eyes. Like both my arm, my shoulders were kind of dinged up, and uh, it was just everything came down, and I just like I just it was really rough for me out there, and uh, but I I preached it with Brent. You know, Brent was my guy all year, and like I was going through it, I was losing, and he always just told me I don't want to like I, you would see me in these matches when I was losing, I'd quit like the last 15 seconds. You could watch me quit and he just said I don't want you to quit you're never freaking out of it and uh, 
and that was it. And I just, I, I took that and I was like, I'm not out of this. And I, you know, I, I owe, I owe myself this and whatever. And I knew I used to freaking mix your dudes in high school like, like that. And actually, I was thinking about to mix it, but really, who brought it up for me was uh, Coach Gray over there in the Cornell corner. He goes, Yo, watch the mixer. And I was like, Bingo, <laughs> wham, you know. So I got him, and uh, as tight as can be, and I pinned him. So. And I got that fire back, and I was able to motor the backside a little bit. So yeah, that was awesome. You had a pretty cool celebration too, as well. Yeah. If, I, if I'll say so myself. Yeah. Um, looking back on that season, though, you got banged up throughout the year. Do you feel like that played a big part in how the second half went for you? Yeah, I think it, it did. Because it, you know, I had to change my wrestling, and my confidence wasn't as where it was, and I had to wear that freaking brace in the practice, and it was just. I'd never, I'd never been through that before in my life. You know, it was that true freshman thing. You know, I'd, I'd strung together ten losses, and I, I ain't lost ten matches in a long time. You know, like that ever. So, I just the whole world came crashing on me, and it was just really rough. But now I, I got it. You know, I think I really got this now because I've been through it. And uh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a really good year. You know, I'm going straight to the top. And I don't give, I don't give a damn. Like I'm gonna do it. So, I feel the best I've ever felt on the mat. Outside of the on the mat and school everything. I'm I'm really excited. So uh, so what's the plan for next season? Are you thinking you're looking a little big for 141? Are you going 49, 57, or whatever the coaches want to do, or 41? Um, yeah, I'm gonna go 49. I think that's the plan because uh, I want to be able to feel good out there. Um, I don't I don't think I should have to worry about my weight. Um, my weight probably buck 60 right now around there, and I feel really good. I I'm not I'm not like fat. I guess you could say I'm, I feel good. I look good, and uh, I feel good on my feet and. Uh, this is the best way for me, I think, and uh, it doesn't matter. I don't care about it. I'm just here to win the national title, and with my guys too. I want I want these guys to to get that that we can do that those type of things, and I think it's all it's all starting to come together, and and, and this team starts to believe it. So, all right, I got to hang out with your dad a little bit in uh, in uh, Tulsa last year at nationals, and I asked him. I was like, did Casey ever? Did he party? Did he ever mess things up or anything? He always said you were a good kid, but he said one time he caught you sneaking out. He got in his vehicle and he went, tracked you down. He did. And found dude. you. So that's awesome. Tell that people he, that story. That's awesome that I told you that. So yeah, I don't know. I think I was a senior and I, I got this. Uh, this my day used to sled pull, like in the county fair. You see the the trucks go down the track with a sled behind them and make make big power with diesels. And uh, I had a diesel, and uh, I had a bed stack in it. It was louder and shit. And uh, <laughs> I, I parked like halfway up the drive. We got this long driveway way out in the sticks, and uh, you know I was gonna go hang out with my buddies that night. And uh, my dad was watching the. I'll never forget. My dad was watching the Tyson Fury fight with uh, the one guy at the Wilder, and uh, ended up like midnight. And I was like, oh, he's got to be in bed, you know. And uh, so there I go down the road, and I get a call from my dad. We're gonna go duck hunting in the morning. Me and my buddies down the road, uh, and I get a call from my dad. I'm like, oh shit! And I missed a call. I'm like, oh shoot! So I, I hit the road. I'm like, whatever. I mean, whatever. And uh, I tried to call him back, he didn't answer, and then here he, I hear, I see two LEDs come out my driveway screaming at me, and I'm like, ah, here we go. So he comes out, comes in front of me, brake checks me, I lock him up, hit a 180 in the road, and uh, there he was, freaking running at me in his underwear in the street, and I'm like, I'm like rolling the window up, locking the damn door, uh, and uh, we made it back, I went back home, he took my keys and everything, it was, it was funny, it was an experience, I mean. It's all cool. Yeah, it's all good. If you're going to sneak out, man, you need like a Tesla or something. Yeah. You can't be sneaking out in that. Yeah, truck. I said screw it, man. I mean, whatever, you know, so cool. yeah, it was funny. Cool. Was good, well, though. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, good to see you again. Thank yep. you. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Cody Chittam in the house. How you feeling? I'm uh, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. All right. Uh, how's Ames treating you so far? Uh, I love it here. I love it here. Everyone trains pretty hard. Everyone does everything right here, and I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Who are your main training partners so far since you've been here? Uh, I'm going a lot with uh, Casey, uh, Uten, um, Metcalf, uh, DSJ, and Carr a lot. What's it like going with Metcalf? Uh, it's pretty cool because he's also like he's he's in there hard banging a hand fight, but he's also really technical. That I don't know. I get in there, we both bang each other's heads, try to give you give each other the concussions and stuff, and it's also. And the cool part is like when we're hand fighting everything and we're trying to kill each other. Right after practice, like it doesn't matter. Does it like, surprise you that he's technical? Uh, not really, no. Cause I mean, he's he does finishes. His finishes are crisp. His like how he's, he's so tactical with his hand fighting, everything. When he gets in the collar ties and underhooks, like he knows what he's doing. And he's he when he gets his position, he'll just attack right through it. So. I mean, I'm learning a lot from everyone here. I was trying to trying to get you in trouble there. I asked if you were surprised. If you were surprised, and like, <laughs> no, I was hoping you were gonna say, "Yeah, I was a little surprised that Metcalf is that tough." 
or, uh, technical. But uh, yeah, so walk us through whenever you decided you were going to transfer out, or I guess not transfer, but leave Iowa City. Why did you want to go to Ames out of all places? Um, You know, it was, it was, I mean, they're one of the best here, and I I fit in pretty well with this crowd, and I love the guys here. I've known Casey since I was this big. I've known a lot of guys from here. Greg's been on a couple of teams with us, and I mean, I it was just the next stop, and I loved it here. And I just fell in love with the culture here and team, and I love Dresser, Metcalf, DSJ, everyone here, and I just feel well here. I uh, was looking forward to watching you at Junior World Team Trials, but we didn't get to see you. Tell us uh, what went into that decision to, uh, to yeah, not wrestle. Yeah, so I uh, messed up my knee probably like a couple weeks before the Open, and I didn't know if I was going to be ready for the trial. So we were trying to rush everything, try to get everything ready, and I just wasn't ready enough, and we didn't want to risk any injury. And I haven't done folks on a long time, so uh, me and Co me and Coach Dresser sat down, and I think we all made a decision that it was wise for us to stay and just train folks down, get ready for the uh, nationals and stuff like that this year. What was that year like last year doing freestyle pretty much the whole time? Um, it was a great experience, especially wrestling high end uh, like senior level tournaments um, and getting all those feels and everything. But um, it was a great experience. I got really good getting on my feet and uh, finishes and working with a lot of guys there, wrestling a lot of those RTC uh, senior level guys and just going live with them and just training hard and um, it was just a great experience. So what's the plan for next year, my man? Um, hopefully come in and um, do well, go to the nationals and just wrestle hard. Cool, appreciate it, man. Yep. Thank Bro. you. Yes, sir. All right, Younger, how we doing, man? Pretty good. I'm you know, working hard with my team, getting yeah. ready for the next season. Yeah, you're looking big. Uh, what are you weighing these days that people want to know? So, I kind of like 234, 235, 233 around that before practice. Okay, so how do you feel being a bigger guy now? I'm feeling great. I said in one interview before, I, this is my like my whole energy. This is the younger Basida that everybody watched in 2019, resting at 97 kilos. Feeling the full energy, you know, weight. way, that, this is me, a lot of energy. Was there ever thought of you going heavyweight last year? Yeah, yeah. Since I think since I just got our American, mm -hmm. my my second year, I thought about it. But Sam came in, you know, and I, I'm, he's he's my friend. So I and the team will get better, you know, like two two really good guys in the same way that that is not possible for the team. What do you think of what? folk style now that you've been here for a while? So what I think is a hard style. I think it's way harder than freestyle because. You know, it's like, it's just seven, seven minutes, you just it's keep rolling. And like the bottom, like, it's hard. But now I kind of like, I enjoying it, you know? Your, in, uh, your English has gotten just yeah. as good as your wrestling has. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how have you gotten better at English? Uh, the time, just being, being here in the United States and like, you know, hanging out with my friends, like American friends, my teammates. Mm -hmm. So that is how. I want to know what your mindset was or what you thought when uh, Coach Dresser went to you in that Cornell duel and said, hey, we need you to bump up and wrestle this guy at heavyweight uh, down there in Louisiana. What did you think of that? Uh, you know, my first thought was, okay, it would be hard, but I just got to make my game plan before the match because it's heavy. It's not the same time I wrestled at 197. So, well, the, the only, the, my, my mindset just was wrestle for the seven minutes mm -hmm. and, get, and get a victory. Yeah, the win, cool. which I did. Yeah, so. yes, you did. You put the team on your back. Yeah. That was awesome to watch. Uh, and Noah Coleman, Coleman and then Divine, like yep. they, they bump out too. So it wasn't just me. It was the it was a team thing. Yep. Did you did you understand though what you know why why you got in that uh, situation and you had to bump up like as far as a duel and everything goes? Yeah. Well, first of all, because Sam was hurt, and then there wasn't any anyone who could. I was the bigger guy there besides Sam, so I have to took it. Cool. Cool. Yep. I appreciate it, my man. Thank and uh, before we let you go here, we got Rainieri over here. He's going to be wrestling Josh Heil. He will be re hey, be ready. Be ready. My guy's ready. He's ready to go. He's not He's not playing around. And Sam Skyler is going to so, be wrestling Gaston. Yeah, Sam Skyler, he's, he's ready too. Look, he, he used to have a good really practice with me. So they are ready to go. And you're going to be in the building? I will be there. I will be there watching and, then, you know, screaming to Rainieri and Skyler, both of them, in the uh, corner there. I appreciate both it, my man. Can you say Thank subscribe you. to Stalemates for me? What? Can you say subscribe to Stalemates? Subscribe to Stalemate? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe. Subscribe to Stalemate, though. Yeah. Don't forget that. <laughs> Can you say it in Spanish, too? Hey, tiene que suscribirte a Stalemate. 
All right, appreciate yep. you, my man. Yeah, good to see you guys.